were probably a somewhat friendly reception and an emphasis on the word somewhat in that sentence. Uh, Angela Merkel has indicated over the last weeks and certainly over the last months that she wants this Brexit process to be able to take its time in order to avoid a chaotic no deal Brexit. Uh, she said time after time that this would be devastating not just to the UK but also to businesses here in Germany. So she's probably going to listen and careful, con carefully consider what uh, Theresa May says. However, saying all of that, there has been a hardening also here in Berlin. Several members, high ranking members of Angela Merkel's Christian Democratic Party, has said that it's time to stop this process and it's time to cut the UK loose with or without a deal. So it's not, it's not clear cut here in Berlin anymore. All right, thank you very much, uh, Joda. Well, let's turn now to Stefan de Vries, who's in uh, Paris. Uh, Stefan, Theresa May is, is heading uh, to Paris after she heads uh, to Berlin to talk to Emmanuel Macron. That is someone uh, who's been vociferous against uh, allowing the UK to have a shorter extension to Article 50. Do you think she's going to be able to make him budge on that? Well, I, I'm not quite sure. Of course, Emmanuel Macron's position in the, in the British media has been described as the bad cop and Angela Merkel as the good cop. But it's actually a bit more complicated than that. Um, Emmanuel Macron is just speaking out loud what probably the majority of the other 27 EU leaders also think, that it's now time to move on and that they have given enough time to Theresa May to come up with a credible alternative or a credible plan. Uh, this has still not been the case. So the main question this afternoon in Berlin and in Paris uh, that will be asked uh, to Theresa May is what are you offering now and since uh, we've just learned that the uh, conversations between Corbyn and Theresa May are not going really well um, I think the Europeans are now uh, really tempted to say okay well then then go go on Friday leave us please because this has lasted long enough then again uh, a no deal nobody really wants a no deal because it is bad not only for the UK but of course also for the Europe European Union. Now, the European leaders, they have to decide unanimously, so that will happen uh, during the summit in Brussels tomorrow. Uh, it will be probably a very, very long summit, but it is not uh, clear, or I, I actually, I, I think it's very unlikely that the visits uh, this afternoon, that the Eurail or the Interrail trip she's making to uh, Berlin and uh, Paris will make any difference to the position of the European leaders um, as it looks now. Because if she has no, uh, if she doesn't come up with a real proposition, and uh, probably this real proposition would be a customs union, then the European Union leaders have no reason to give the UK another extension. If, if, as you were saying, Emmanuel Macron does uh, decide to stand firm against that shorter, shorter extension, do you think he's going to be able to muster the support among the EU27 to reject it? They are, of course, trying at the moment to avoid a no-deal Brexit. Everybody is trying to avoid a no-deal Brexit, but what are the alternatives? Um, if the UK stays in until the 30th of June, what are the guarantees that there will be indeed a plan on the 30th of June? And if they do stay uh, until the 30th of June, well, then have, they have to participate in the European elections, uh, which uh, are only in seven weeks from now. Um, and that also means that the European Parliament, uh, at the new European Parliament, there will be uh, a, a whole bunch of European, uh, sorry, British MEPs who will be there only for a couple of weeks uh, and they will try to influence the system in a way that will not really affect them because they're leaving anyway. So it's a really complicated situation. Um, but I do think that Emmanuel Macron is not really the bad cop here. He's just voicing um, uh, the opinions of all his colleagues in the other 26 uh, capitals in Europe. Uh, but of course, the fact that that is one of the most important voices. Uh, so that's why all the spotlights are on him tonight. Uh, but. It's up to Theresa May. That's very simple, the message in all the European capitals.